Jeff uh, just came online and said he's happy to help you. All right. Um, yeah. Are they? I just started the live, but are they able to see? Yes. Yeah, so I'll double check. Okay. Hopefully they can at least hear us. I think right now they're just seeing the main screen. That's what I'm seeing. Okay. But uh, let's see if they can at least they can at least hear us. Hey, hi everyone. How you doing? Oh my goodness! What a way to start the broadcast with tech issues. I apologize, you guys. <laughs> oh my hey, goodness! Th um, just consider it a little supernatural goings on. No, no, no. My picture fell off earlier, and now this is happening. What's next? I so, what's the that. name of this show? It's a paranormal corner with Nikki Ray. And I've teamed up with the Jay Hills uh, podcast, Paranormal Entertainment. Sounds you great. Know. Yeah, thank you so much <laughs> for being with us tonight. And you apologizing about the issues. It won't stay this uh, way for a while. I know. Hopefully not. Maybe next time they'll be able to see and hear us. <laughs> so I saw like I'm sure um right now they know who you are and I really am stoked that you're back on our show. And um, yeah, um, you're not only the founder of the War Lake Foundation that you and your grandmother Lorraine started. And I'm also still stoked to be part of it. <laughs> And um, you've been on many cases. And oh, yeah, I've been doing this since 1980. Yeah, I've been, you know, I started working with my okay. grandparents as a teenager. Yeah, I've been doing it since I was uh, 16. Uh, although I saw my grandmother working when I was 14. Um, and, you know, that's the one question that will always get the same answer from me. You know, what's the most profound case? Right, it's, right. Oh, it's, easy, it's easily uh, the Maurice Thuriel case because, well, because oh, it was right. a deadly case. Somebody died uh, eventually. And um, it taught me and my grandparents um a tremendous amount. I mean, my grandfather had a heart attack and almost died during the exorcism. Oh, wow. That that really happened. I was there for it. And um, I'm sorry to hear that. eventually Maurice uh, shot his <laughs> wife, blew her arm off, and took his own wow. life while under possession. Well, yeah, that should be... Scary. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> well, I, my focus is on helping people, so I don't right, worry right. too much about, you know, the things we encounter. You know, yeah, fine. When I was sixteen or seventeen or eighteen, that stuff fascinated me. Um, mm -hmm. But nowadays, not really. Uh, I I don't do this because. I, I'm fascinated by the paranormal. I'm not. Uh, I do this because there's a need. And there are too many, well, to put it bluntly, too many jackasses out there who uh, right. just want to get, you know, some evidence and don't care who they hurt to get it. They'll stir up right. tra uh, trouble and then leave the family with no support. So, yeah, I do this simply because... We need to have people with good ethics helping those in need. Okay, that's good that you guys are out there. I try to help whenever I can. Um, oh, of course, yes, you you're one of you're one of the you're one of the members of the foundation. I uh, think I do appreciate it. Um, and uh, Jeff is saying he can only hear us. Um, uh, he only see. The graph is right. not 
Well, At next time we'll yeah. <laughs> ne next time we'll uh, work on the the video part. Let's take off my glasses. I see better. So weird. My next question. I don't know if uh, I've asked you this. I know I haven't my show before. Um, what was it like to learn from your grandparents and learning, learning, I'm sorry, learning born? Well, with my grandmother, it was always a joy. Always. Um, she mm -hmm. would give me great information on how to work with my abilities and how to go beyond something simple like the aura and and actually really get into the person my grandfather and i it was different um he especially in the early days in the 70s and 80s he was um more entrenched in the the old-fashioned way of looking at things for him witchcraft and satanism were the same thing back then uh magic could only be black magic there could not be white magic it took a long time for him to change his views he thought rock and roll music was all satanic um you know and he, and he didn't see he didn't see the uh the importance of psychology in this field but we had a lot of uh discussions over that that took lots of years before he came around to seeing things differently yeah man i almost did psychology when uh, i was in the community college now i wish i would have taken it it's it's a fascinating field of study it's what i studied um but I caution anybody who studies psychology to not think that they're they're all of a sudden a therapist or something because right. <laughs> it, it, a master's degree in psychology isn't good enough for that. You've got to go beyond. You've got to get your doctorate. Um, you can get your master's of social work, and that's terrific. Um, but if if you truly want to understand psychology, you've got to go all the way and really study. All right, that's true. Um, let's see. I have plenty of questions, so hopefully they'll send us their questions as well. Yeah, go um, right ahead. Let's see. Um, what are some signs of spirit or demonic attachment? Okay. Um, one thing I want to caution people about the the term demon or demonic mm -hmm. is a very loaded word, and it is not well understood. I don't even allow people in the foundation to use that word with our clients because we don't want to scare the crap out of them. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, we've got everybody from archbishops to Taoist uh, healers and uh, witches and pagans and Jews and doctors. We've got people from every walk of life and every spiritual path you can imagine, in including Kimbanda, which probably nobody here even knows what that one is. Hmm, I haven't heard. Um, <clears throat> but every single culture in the world defines demon differently and whatever those mm -hmm. things are they manifest according to our own religious and spiritual and cultural beliefs so you're right. not going to get an old-fashioned christian demon in india for instance Right, and I usually refer to the demonic as or darker spirits. Uh, 
Yeah, but even and then, I, I, I don't <laughs> like. To, I don't even like to consider them spirits at first. No, that's true. Show, yeah. show me something that makes it more than a more than a thought form that's projected by our own fears and our own energy. How do I know that this isn't something that we've created ourselves? That's true. Yeah. You know, just because it even may seem to have intelligence and have answers. Somebody else in that room has those answers. It could be something as simple as telepathy. Hmm. Someone picking up on someone else's answers and feeding them back. And a Facebook uh, user is asking if I embrace the idea that I love Joe Frankie. <laughs> Joe Frankie's like a brother to me. He is the... That would be Joe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Uh, he is the chairman of the board of the foundation, and of course, I embrace I, that statement. We all love him, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, let's see. Um, can you explain the difference from a ghost hunt and or investigations? Can you say that again? Yeah, oh, sorry. Can you explain the difference between a ghost hunt or an investigation? Between what and an investigation? A ghost hunt. Oh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that term. Okay. Uh, at all. My, my grandparents, a long time ago, called themselves ghost hunters. They changed that over time as well. Okay. Um, to me, that's like saying you're a people hunter. Because ghosts are just people. And I'm not going to go out and hunt people. That's true. Um, I'm here to help people. And I don't care if you're alive or dead. If you've got something you need help with, I'm here to help. You know, If you've got unfinished business and you, you, you've died and you're afraid to pass over without finishing that business, then we're here to uh, help you, that spirit to pass over. So yeah, an investigation, I guess, to answer more completely your question, though, the investigation is everything. That's half of the, our job is figuring out what we're dealing with, half of it. And that takes a long time, you know, because it's never oh, yeah. simple. It's never a clean, easy answer. It's not, oh, you're schizophrenic. Or, oh, you're a drug addict. No, just because you have those problems doesn't mean you don't have paranormal issues as well. It gets messy. You know, why is it that you're getting negative hauntings? Well, this is what we've got to diagnose and figure out. Right, that's true. So, um, Jeff is like, good answer. We can be friends now. <laughs> I thought we were friends before. Okay. I guess I'm working <laughs> on my calendar that today our friendship started. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as it is, oh, yeah, here it is. I'm just talking my question here. Um, can you, <coughs> excuse me, can you, uh, explain the different levels of, uh, possessions? Sure. Um, you're talking about the different stages that one, goes through um, uh, yeah. during a haunting. Now, yeah. <clears throat> there are a lot of people who come up with their own nuanced uh, way of describing this. My grandfather made it very simple. You start with infestation, which is when mm -hmm. all of the phenomena is outside of you. So that's when you have things flying across the room or your keys are going missing or you're hearing voices uh, or falls. you feel yeah the picture falls the, <laughs> the cold spots in the room that kind of stuff that's all Thanks. outside of you then over time in rare cases it can advance to something called oppression that's when there's an actual spirit that's trying to shape the way you think and feel you still have free will, but it is trying to influence you. If it goes 
much farther, a lot farther, then it can turn into full-blown possession. I have done this now for almost 43 years, and I have worked on less, maybe less than about 10 possession cases in 43 years. They are really rare. Mm -hmm. And I'm an exorcist. Mm -hmm. So don't uh, don't jump to conclusions that what you're dealing with is demonic. It almost never is. And it's a shame that uh, the media has made it seem like they're everywhere and they're not. Yeah, true. I love Hollywood, right? <laughs> right. Now, Carol uh, is saying that she hears spirits talking to her when she's sleeping. And I'm not surprised by that, actually. When I we're in our, Yeah. When we're in our dream state, we are closer on the astral plane to other spirits. And we can connect with them. So it actually is easy at that point. Right, I should be just be sitting here at my desk, and all of a sudden I would hear spirits or angels, you know. Because mm -hmm. that's when my mind is most relaxed. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so. Had uh, any ghost or spirit ever followed his home? How can you deal with it? <laughs> <laughs> many, many times. Um, I've had spirits, uh, same thing that happened with my grandparents. I'd have spirits show up to try to get me to back off even before mm -hmm. I went on a case. It's kind of like they, they know that you're going to get called. So they're trying to scare you away. It never works. Right. <laughs> um, I have had so many different things happen to me. Um, but as long as you are firm and strong in your faith and you command it without fear to be gone by the power of God, then you can get rid of it. But you have to be willing you have to give up your ego and you have to admit that this isn't about you you know it's not your power right. getting rid of these things but they do follow our rules and if you don't put up the rules if you don't say enough is enough these are the guidelines mm -hmm. then they won't have any guidelines and they'll do whatever they want I was in a house uh, in New Zealand a few months ago, and we had just done a really uh -huh. good, we did a nice uh, lecture that night. And I, I knew there was a ghost in that uh, school that we had been in. Well, it followed us home. And for about five minutes, the bedroom door is rattling. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? It finally dawned on me that something is rattling. So I go to the door and I open it. And my friend is outside the door, like kind of looking at me like, what have you been doing in the bedroom that's making so much noise? <laughs> and I was like, uh, I let me close the door again and see what happens. So I closed the door and it started rattling again. Hmm. I said, all right, enough of that. You cut it out. You are not welcome here. Stop it now. And it immediately stopped. Immediately. Yeah, I heard about that sometimes. Yeah, they'd be really firm about letting them know mm -hmm. that you mean business. <laughs> every every religion has different ways of putting psychic boundaries on spirits, and the spirits respect them. Uh, thank you for answering those. And of course, anyone else have any more questions? Let us know. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, um, at the end of the month, I think it's let's see, today is the seventh, and it's uh, Tuesday. Today's Tuesday, right? Yeah. 
Tuesday. All right. So Taco 8th, Tuesday. 9th, 10th, 11th. All right. So on the 25th of this month, I will be doing another class online um, oh, with, cool. a, with a community college that I've done them with now. This will be the third one. Uh, we're going to be getting into my grandparents' most famous cases. We're going to be talking about the movies and the reality versus the movies and using the movies as examples to show what real investigative techniques are like versus what you see on television. And we'll get into every single kind of phenomena we can think of. Um, so if people are interested, they can contact me uh, at you know, Facebook, uh, Chris McKinnell. By the way, McKinnell's with two N's and two L's. <laughs> mm -hmm. <All> right. <laughs> um, and we have a question here about whether or not uh -huh. a person who is alive can haunt another person through astral projection. I have actually heard of that happening. I know of yeah. people who have such a strong psychic presence that they can astrally project themselves and be seen by others who are sensitive. Mm. Uh, there was a case of a woman who for years had dreamed about this house she didn't know. And she would keep going right. back to this house. And then one day she's just driving along and she sees the house. And she she just feels this need to go and check it out. So she knocks on the door and the young girl who answered the door almost died of fright because the woman who knocked on the door had been the ghost that had been showing up at their home for years. She was alive and well, but her, she had been astrally projecting herself into the home of these strangers who could see her. Uh, yeah, it is interesting. It's, uh, I think I can ask her for that too. So, and I have very vivid dreams as well. Absolutely. And the thing is, you know, we can create um, servant spirits called egregores. These are thought forms, they're projections of our own consciousness. Oh, right. And we can create them to cause harm or to do good for others. Uh, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of um, focus. My grandparents worked on with a conjuring mirror. And this guy in Pennsylvania has spent months trying to use a, a mirror to see what his enemies were up to. And it took a long time and a lot of practice and a lot of determination. But eventually, he could not only see his enemies... But he could then picture what he wanted to happen to them, and it would happen. So they would fall down the stairs or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Projection. And, you pro and you protect yourself the same way you do from any paranormal attack. You have to make sure that you're uh, putting the white light around you on a regular basis every single day you're psychically grounding yourself that you're using whatever representation of your faith helps you so if it's the saint benedict medal or a crucifix or um a star of david it doesn't matter whatever <laughs> helps you focus your faith god comes when we ask but we have to ask because we have free will yeah that's true i find myself doing that more every day you have um, to sensitive and you know <laughs> now i don't know if you say this jeff and uh question here uh, how do you defend yourself from someone uh attacking you in that way yeah, no i i just answered that actually oh, okay okay i was making sure <laughs> all right uh no yay is missing me but anyway, I tell them we're just doing audio. <laughs> okay. But if there's anybody out there who has any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. That's why we're here. Yeah. 
you know, um, the Warren Legacy Foundation is an organization that helps people for free and anonymously. And if you need help, you can go to our website, www.warrenfiles.com. Click on the Contact Us link, and there's a Google form to fill out to ask for help. And we're always happy to help. Yep. And um, thank you for sharing that. And um, what what I have to ask, what are your thoughts about the uh, Ouija board? Well, it doesn't matter to me if it's a Ouija board, a seance, automatic writing, uh, right. <laughs> or a million other tools like the spirit box and all these other things. It isn't the tool. It's your intention. Right. You know, it, I don't know if this is going to make a good metaphor, but <laughs> it, it's like blaming the the gun for the murder. The gun didn't kill anybody. It's the person, somebody. Uh you don't need a Ouija board or a seance. If your intention is to communicate with another spirit, like with a spirit box, <clears throat> it's your intention that matters. You're making a connection with a spirit. You're helping that spirit to bind with you. You've given it, right. you've given it permission to come into your life. And if it happens to be a spirit that wasn't the nicest person while they were alive, why would death make them any better? That's true. Happily, there are more good people than bad people in the world. But even so, when a person dies, mm -hmm. it can be a traumatic event. And they yeah. can be lost or hurt. And they're not trying to scare you. They're not trying to hurt you but because you don't know any better you're going to be terrified right yeah especially you don't know what's going on <laughs> um so this kind of leads to my next question do you think that the Ouija boards are sometimes um, the cause of the it's not the Ouija board that's the cause but it's mm -hmm. your intention to make communication. You don't need to go out and buy a Ouija board. You can <laughs> use a piece of charcoal to write letters on a on the floor and then right. use an upside down cup or something. You know, it it isn't important that you have that object. It's your intention that matters. Your intention to speak with spirit. And we can even use our TVs for that matter. <laughs> yeah. He, I, know I, know people, I know people who communicate with spirits through television. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they receive messages psychically through the television. Oh, wow. But to me, that is probably more of a, um, a meditation technique, a way of allowing the white noise to go through your unconsciousness and bring up the answers that are there because you are psychic we are all psychic right and this one person has found a way of watching the white noise on television as a way of getting that information for herself yeah i always wondered about that <laughs> okay uh let's see have you ever seen the shadow people and like the hat man so i don't far. believe in them i don't believe in them i believe that ghosts by definition are almost always shadows because mm -hmm. it's easier to manifest as a shadow than it is as a full apparition um That's they don't like have that, yeah. yeah they don't have the the expertise to become a full-bodied apparition for the most part um, the whole hat man and shadow people thing. This is people who don't understand what they're looking at. Um, we, we go through, uh, it's not stages, but let's say fads, uh, where, you know, there were the black eyed children, the, the phantom, the phantom, uh, 
Hitchhiker, um, The right. Thin Man. All of these are created one way or another, but whether it be a creepy pasta uh, contest, which is what created the Thin Man or the Slender Man, maybe it was called. That's Slender what I was Man. trying to think of. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Thin Man was a movie series from the 30s. Great series. Um, I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> detective series. Okay. But anyway. Um, but yeah, we create the things that terrify us. Mm. It acts to me that says a lot about our personal power and what we're capable of. And maybe we should be less afraid and more hopeful. I mean, if we can manifest our worst fears, imagine what we can manifest when we really pay attention. That's what right. uh, Tibetan Buddhist monks can manifest things out of thin air because oh, wow. they've spent their lives practicing and learning i like a lot of practice oh yeah there, there are no yeah, there. there are no um shortcuts to this kind of thing you know right. people contact us looking for help and they just want whatever gone but it, it it's not yeah. like a magic wand <laughs> you know we're, we're willing to help we're willing to do everything we can to help but nine times out of ten, it's going to take more than a simple spiritual cleansing to get rid of what's in the home. That's true. Especially if we're dealing with the human spirit. They have free will, too. If they are afraid to pass over or they love their home and they don't want to leave, there's not much you can do about it except learn to live with them and to do that right. to be respectful and, uh, you know, treat, treat them... The way you would want to be treated. Yeah, it's like I've learned to embrace my gifts as well as, mm -hmm. you know, to be around. <laughs> um, let's see. I love the place. What are your thoughts? This is actually the top of my head. What are your thoughts on uh, reincarnation? Well, I think you and I have had this conversation before. Um, my my grandfather uh, taught me regression hypnosis when I was 16 years old. Uh, both my grandparents and I are firm believers in reincarnation. I remember several of my lives, and uh, I wasn't, you know, I, I was definitely a different person in those lifetimes, but those lifetimes have shaped me into who I am today, too. Yeah, I believe I'm an old soul. See, um, what would be the serious haunted locations that you meant to? Some of the more serious hauntings? On uh, the serious? Mysterious? Uh, uh, serious. Huh? On. Uh, the most creepy or serious? Oh, serious. Um, no, serious. Like, they're afraid. Serious. Yeah, serious. Um, uh, sorry. I worked on a case a few years ago with a, a young man, well, a middle aged <coughs> man. The Catholic Church had already been involved, and they had done the same kind of things that we do they they did the medical evaluation the psychological evaluation and the paranormal evaluation and they did determine that yes he was coming under possession and yes he needed an exorcism mm -hmm. um i watched him come come under possession 20 or 30 times and oh well they didn't move fast enough and he came under possession one final time, hung himself, killed himself in front of his wife. And then 20 minutes later, when the EMT and the police were there, the body sat back up, opened oh, yeah. its eyes, which were completely black, <laughs> turned to the EMT and said, he's ours, you can't have him, and then dropped dead again. So anytime we're dealing with life and death that's 
there, there's nothing more important than that. Right. Yeah, no, Jeremy for sure would have nightmares. <laughs> I, I don't get nightmares anymore. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I pretty much every single night is a nice, relaxing night. Your mind can be very intense sometimes. The work, the work can be challenging. Yeah. <laughs> um, what would be your favorite book or author? <laughs> Uh, that's an easy one, actually. Okay. Illusions by Richard Bach. Huh. I have recommended that book oh, two or three hundred times. I've given it away at least a hundred times in my life. Uh, he's the same man that wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel back in the 60s. But Illusions take you about two and a half hours to read. And it changed my life. I uh, highly recommend it. Yeah, I have to watch, watch out for that one. <laughs> well, you can find it on Amazon. Oh, okay. thanks. Sure. Like I um, said, it's a short book. It takes you two and a half hours to read. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I don't want to talk much about UFOs or USO. Have you <laughs> had any experiences with them? I am not positive. Um, the the foundation has. We've worked right. with a couple of cases, um, but there was a there was a night, and unfortunately, this was back when I was really in bad health, and I uh -huh. couldn't move. I was in a wheelchair, but I was visiting my my mother. And my son was with me downstairs in the living room. It was the middle of the night, like one or o'clock in the morning. And my my mother was upstairs asleep with her husband. And all of a sudden, my son says, Daddy, what is that? And there's this incredibly bright light in the backyard. I mean, it filled up the entire backyard like um, a floodlight. Like, you know, the the um the big searchlights that they use at hollywood premieres uh-huh just like that so every 15 minutes or so this light would come on for two minutes and then it would be gone again and this went on for a couple of hours i couldn't it took me over an hour to be able to get up because of how bad my health was at that point and <laughs> that light whatever wherever it was coming from had to be coming from inside the swamp where there was no way heavy equipment could have gotten in there there was no way a vehicle could have gotten in there but it was it was as bright as daylight when that light would come on and was that a, was that a ufo i don't Oh, well, possibly. I know possibly. I had, I had a if, if, if I had an alien drop by and say, hey, you want to come uh, <laughs> around the universe with me? Like, yeah, adios. Let's go. I'd be like, beat me up, study. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I've seen a few UFOs out here. No, you're in the right place, I guess. I, I yeah, didn't see them in Peru, and I was looking. Yeah, oh well, because we're away from the city, like a mile away, so we can see the stars and planets out here a lot better. So let's see, I lost where I was. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we discussed this before, but what are your thoughts about NDEs and your death experience? Well, I was lucky. I got to study uh, near-death experiences with mm -hmm. Dr. Ken Ring. He was one of the foremost authorities on the subject back in the 1980s. God, I'm oh, wow. 
<laughs> he, he was a professor at uh, the University of Connecticut, and I was lucky he took me under his wing. And I mean, he knew who I was. He knew what other research I had been up to. He even wrote okay. uh, my letter to get into grad school. So um, he was a great guy. Even back then, back in 1984, 85, there had been over 8 million near-death experiences in the world. Yeah. And they, they were all the same across different cultures. Didn't matter if you were Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jew. They, the actual phenomena that you experience, the white light and the reliving of your lifetimes, everything, all of that is something that is seen throughout the world. Yeah, I've been finding myself just fascinated by it by watching the videos on YouTube sometimes. Oh, absolutely. And you know, one out of four people in the world has an out-of-body experience at some point in their life. So I, I, uh, I've always been stumped how somebody could be afraid of the afraid of death when they may have already experienced leaving their body. They know they're not their body. I, when I was 18 or 19, I uh, was living in a haunted house, often was the case. And I got up from my bed. I'd been laying down in the middle of the day. And I walked over to the bedroom door and I, I couldn't open the bedroom door. I was like, what the hell is wrong? It won't turn. Turned around and I saw myself laying in bed. And all of a sudden, it was like all the air went out of me. I went, <gasps> and I sat right up in bed, wide awake. And I knew that that wasn't a dream. Oh, wow. I probably had a couple of spirits, Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've, we've, you've shared them with me. You should yeah. share them with the audience. <laughs> I should have wrote it down. I almost said, write your dreams down. You never know. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so how can you tell the difference from a like the house or a genuine case? Uh, like I said earlier, about half of what we do is just diagnosis. Right. And you don't want to make a mistake here. So we rely heavily on medical professionals to help us. Um, we don't discriminate just because a person does have mental health issues like for instance um they're they're depressed and they're not taking their medication all right well mm -hmm. yes let's get you back on your medication you know but that doesn't mean we're going to ignore whatever it is you're experiencing right. you know we we want to help with that as well Uh, thank you. Um, what, um, this is another fun question. Um, what would be on your budget list of locations? <laughs> <laughs> I know I've got a few. Uh, well, considering <laughs> I've lived in over 85 places around the world, <laughs> I, um, I definitely want to see Iceland and Ireland. Oh, yeah. Um, I really want to go to Sweden, uh, Finland, Norway. I'd like to spend the winter in Norway on the fjords. Uh, and I guess the Netherlands. Plus, I'd like to go to places like Romania, uh, go back to the Czech Republic. I, I fell in love with that. Um, there's a castle, or I mean a cave system the largest cave system in the world. It was discovered in the 1990s in Vietnam. Oh, wow. And it takes over a week to hike through it. It's so big that there's a rainforest inside the cave system underground, as well as uh, ceilings as high as a cathedral. So mm -hmm. that that's another thing I would like to see. 
I wouldn't mind seeing the catacombs. I think that's in the, the UK, right? Uh, Paris. The Paris, Paris. catacombs. Yeah. Yep. I I used, to, I used to sleep right above them. Oh. <laughs> well, so does um, most of Paris. So you know. Yeah. Doesn't count for much. Yeah, it's like underground tunnels around a lot of the places. Well, that's because when they ran out of grave space, they ended up moving all of the bones huh. underground. Oh, wow. That kind of makes sense. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share before we go? I know we have like a few minutes left. Well, I... I've enjoyed this. I, I appreciate it as I always do when I get to talk to you. Oh, um, thank you. For me, I just want to make sure that if there's anybody out there who needs help, they know where to find us. Right. That's what's most important. You know, just reach out thank to you. us uh, at our website, www.warnfiles.com, or get a hold of me online on Facebook, Chris McKinnell. Um, M C K I N N E L L. And I'm happy to help. We all are within the foundation. Yep. And um, and I do apologize about the tech issues that we had in this program. Hopefully it uh, will happen. <laughs> exactly. It'll all be fine next time. <laughs> we'll make yeah, sure that appreciate. some of our tech people help with that. Yeah, I'm going to blame the gremlins on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I do appreciate it. Um, I think, does, does anybody else have any more quick questions for us? We do have a... And uh, I, I have one. Um, you, do you ever wonder if you, you can capture, like, any animal type of recordings like an EVPs or film? Have I ever had an EVP? Like, yeah, from animals that uh, sound like cats or Oh, I or see. Yeah, I, well, yeah, remember the, <laughs> there was a, a book called The Haunted. Hmm. Uh, it was about the Schmurls in West Pitts in Pennsylvania. And mm -hmm. my grandparents sent me there. Uh, there was even a, a God help us a movie back in like ninety one or ninety two called The Haunted, uh, with mm -hmm. Sally Kirkland playing my grandmother. And uh, you can see that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But there was a point there where I was using an old cassette recorder, <laughs> and when I replayed it, I could hear pigs grunting. You know. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. When I when I reviewed one of my, I don't know if I can find it. If I can find it, I'll share it with you. But it sounded like it kept me meowing. <laughs> oh yeah, I've heard that as well um, on other <laughs> cases. Matter of fact, my grandparents had a famous case on Lindley Street in. <laughs> Bridgeport, Connecticut, back in 1972 or 73. Oh, that's when I was born. <laughs> 72. Shush, shush you. <laughs> anyway. Um, and a black cat came up the stairs. There were, uh, there was a police officer, a fireman, and a priest in the kitchen. And the black cat came up the stairs from the basement, looked at the police officer, and said, go to hell. Oh, well. Oh, Jeff Rose, that was Joe snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Joe. What, Joe, Joe wasn't on that particular case. Oh. Yeah, uh, when, when I was out in the vicinity cemetery, um, I actually got a picture of a full um horse ration. What was and it? A full what? A horse operation. Like oh, people sitting on horses. 
Yeah. If I find that, I'll share it with you. Oh, absolutely. It, please. It still haunts me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Figuratively speaking. Yeah. So, um, let's see. I'll let you see anybody else have any more questions for us. I haven't seen any come up. All right. Yeah. Um, shall we wrap it up here? Or? Certainly. Be I know it's getting get late for you. so. Well, it's only 10 o'clock, but yeah, it's it, for me, that's late. <laughs> I'm usually up late anyway. Well, you're yeah, a East Coast girl. I mean, a West Coast girl. Yep. So I do appreciate you being with us tonight and hopefully next time we'll have better luck with the tech. I'm problems. sure we will. We have enough people to help. Next time it'll it'll go much more smoothly. And Thank you very week, much, Nikki. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Um, you're always welcome back. And uh, next week I'll be uh what next week, 14th. Uh happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I'll yeah. be take taking that week off. But the week the following week, I'll have Father Dr. Kenneth Torres with us. Nice. I was looking forward to that. Uh, and hopefully we'll I, highly, that. I highly recommend listening to uh, Archbishop uh, Torres. He's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. He's awesome. All you guys are awesome. So I do appreciate what you guys do. Well, thank you very much. All right, y'all have a great and safe night, and uh, thank you, Chris. You have a great night. You too. Good. God bless you, Nikki, and God bless everyone thank listening. You. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Thank you guys for watching, for listening to my paranormal father with Nikki Wright, and uh, we'll be back the following week with Father Archbishop Dr. Kenneth Torres. Thank you guys. Good night.